Hello, everybody. So hopefully you can hear us. Um, I'm going to put you all on mute for now. Um, so Gemma can have 100% of our time and energy. And I guess we'll get to it. But, you know, Gemma's here and we're looking forward to hearing her portfolio and going through her work and her journey into the fashion arts world. So good luck, Gemma. And we'll all be sitting here watching um, in grace. So good luck. Thanks, Patrick. Um, so a little to introduce myself, I'm Gemma O'Brien. And I my entry into the fashion world was really studying fashion um, as my degree. Um, I went to Central St. Martins. And before that, I did a art and design foundation. So I studied different forms of art and then settled on fashion um, and did quite a bit of rigorous fashion drawing during that time, um, mainly based from life drawing um, and learned the fundamentals about, you know, lines crossing the body at different angles um, and the, the, you know, the anatomical aspect of fashion drawing with the collarbone and the hips and poses and that kind of thing. And then I went on to do my degree in fashion communication and promotion, which consisted of photography, fashion journalism. So I would, at that time, I would create drawings to go with the articles um, because it kind of felt like a second nature thing to do. Um, also styling and some fashion show production. Um, at that time, it was quite print heavy because it was just before digital and social media took off. So our final year project was very much print magazine based. Um, and that was that was an interesting experience to have, you know, a physical object in, in the form of a magazine. Um, after that, I went to uh, communication design as a account project manager. And I worked in London based design agencies, specifically around communications, branding, wayfinding, interior design and architectural elements for global shopping centres. So that gave me an insight into um, sort of customer journeys in a sort of more retail uh, aspect environment and the decisions they made. And that was in UK, France, Belgium, uh, Poland and Slovakia. Um, I also had uh, industry experience in fashion. So I interned at the Vivian Westwood Press Office, which was brilliant experience. Um, also show studio as an editorial assistant and Sunday time style. Um, so after my project management life, I then had a bit of a career break and got very much into dancing. And that was really good for me because it brought back the idea of the body and self-expression and how clothing can be very integral in that. Um, and so I then started sort of drawing my friends, my dancer friends, and then went back into, you know, the fashion week shows and illustrating those. And uh, so I'm happy to share some of that work with you now. So here is, I suppose, what you might call a bit of a triptych. And uh, this was for the Maison Margiela, sealed with a loving kiss, co-ed spring summer 21 show. Um, and this show, I mean, this was at an interesting time during the lockdown, I suppose, when fashion shows weren't running as normal on catwalks and designers were using film to communicate their collections in quite a different and unique way. Um, and what struck me about this show was that there was a lot of storytelling and an attention to characters, which I find quite interesting when illustrating shows. Um, 
so this show, the idea was it was in a village in Argentina and tango, the dance tango, played a fundamental aspect in this. And uh, the, the models, uh, Leon Dame, he took tango lessons um, and it was a very involved process. The film was uh, created by Nick Knight and was shot by Britt Lloyd. And uh, the narrative was obviously uh, John Galliano's creative direction. And so at this time of lockdown and isolation, I decided to focus on hands because at that time it was quite rare that you would, you know, you wouldn't be able to meet up with people or have, you know, the, the normal interaction, physical interactions that you might well have. And so with this, I just honed in on the hands aspect. Um, so the first one is the model Malik, Malik Bodhi. And I really like just the small details of his cuff and the, the cuff links in his jacket and the lines in his hand. And he's got his hands behind his back. Um, and the second one is uh, Leon Dame, who's a regular uh, model for Maison Margiela. Um, he's known for having quite a characteristic walk um, on the runway. Um, but here he's holding a fairly weathered pair of tango, red tango pumps behind his back. And uh, again, it was what intrigued me was having illustrated these from video stills, you could in a way create your own story. Um, just by focusing in on smaller details. And then to the right of that is uh, two models holding hands. And so it really fitted into this idea of uh, hands. <laughs> um, and also some details with the stitches on the, on the clothing. Um, having done that, that that introduced me again to show studio and um, having contact with them. And I, I illustrated some, uh, it was the Milan menswear autumn winter 21 shows, um, which was really interesting experience um, to do illustrations um, and to be quite free with them. And, um, you know, perhaps you don't have to do the traditional illustration. You can, you can communicate in perhaps a more abstract way. Um, and here, this is just looking at the more recent Maison Margiela show, which was the co-ed autumn winter 2023 show. So this was mixed media. So on the left, this is um, two models and the, the coat is just really striking. It's a beautiful green with this great big bow. And um, on the right is again is Leon Dame, who is the model who has the very characteristic walk. And I just really wanted to capture his um, stance and his pose on the runway. And again, these were done from video fil uh, stills, um, which was you know a different way of getting image references. Um, then moving on to Saint Laurent, um, again, this is mixed media, so it's acrylics, watercolour and inks. Um, and this, these are a combination of the most recent show, uh, the menswear show. And what I really love about what Anthony Vacciarello does is that he really keeps the kind of signature style of Yves Saint Laurent. And, there's a very strong sense of, you know, elegance, moodiness and drama, which to me is what is why I love fashion. Um, and also the musical aspect. So you can see in the top right, there's um, a musician playing the piano. And I believe Charlotte Gainsbourg played in that show as well. So I quite like to capture, as a music fan myself, I quite like to capture that aspect and how music can influence you and also 
listening to music whilst you're drawing or illustrating can help maybe bring something else out into the artwork. Um, and sometimes I find with designers that there'll be a colour palette that comes into play. And this is generally the colour palette that I use for Saint Laurent. Um, so it's quite monochromatic and elements of gold. And again, small details. Um, but really, I, I quite like to capture the what I feel is very, very elegant uh, designer and show. Um, moving on to where I also get inspiration is from books. So I read Patrick Suskin's Perfume. I think it was for the second time. And uh, reading that book, it really brought to mind some colours, actually. Um, I think it was the late 18th century, early 19th. Um, so the lead character is in Paris and he makes this uh, journey uh, to grass and he's a, you know, a perfume apprentice. And so I decided, oh, I'd really love to go and visit grass and, you know, see the perfume capital of the world because I, I love perfume myself. And at the bottom, you can see there's an image from the Fragonard Museum, which has wonderful uh, uh, examples of, well, they're, they're not examples, they're real, um, perfume bottles, and they're very old, and actually surprisingly quite colourful. Um, and it was just extremely interesting to go there and, and look at all of this. And so I then looked at um, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Fragile fragrance and this was an illustration I did based on the advert which was originally shot by Jean Baptiste Mondino and so really what I wanted to do was incorporate or assimilate the colours that I was sort of seeing feeling in this book into the illustration and this one I submit, submitted to the FIDA awards and was happy to be shortlisted um, and again, it's it's quite monochromatic, and um, but trying to get across perhaps that perfume can have a look and an essence and a feel. Um, I also enjoy painting. So, well, actually, enjoy is, is an interesting word. Sometimes it's quite torturous, but <laughs> it's um, some it's much slower process especially using oils but I want, wanted to kind of push myself to use a different medium outside of the watercolours and the acrylics um, and just kind of see what this medium might bring about and what I wanted to do what, what how this came about was taking photographs of um, some friends of mine and the brief to them being you know where what you feel like on the day so it's sort of you know come as you are and um I would then paint them and so here are two examples um one on the left is prints and again I mean it's really the small details his necklace um trying to look at you know the creases in his his top um also the facial features and the colour green, which was had quite a significant meaning to him. Um, and then on the right is Julian Dufour, who, uh, who I've known for quite a while. And I took this photograph in the flat I was living at at the time. And I really liked the way the light, uh, you know, was he captured the light in his body and um, just wanted to draw it and also the, you know, his decorative items in there with the interior design of the room. Um, and it was really more than anything just to challenge myself. And, you know, the idea of paintings in the past before photography was actually a way of capturing what people were wearing. Um, but mostly, you know, that was in the realm of high society and people who could afford to have their portraits painted um so yes this was really 
just a personal challenge, um, which I would quite like to continue doing. Um, I also do textiles and embroidery. Um, and here are a few examples. Um, so on the top left, this was actually a lockdown project and um, I decided to really just uh, go with the flow, what the ideas that were coming to me each day, I would um, just stitch onto the jacket. So what when I finished it, it kind of ended up as being a bit of a story on fabric, but one that you could wear. Um, and it was it was very relaxing to do, and it was it was a nice different thing to do as well, in a different way of using line and colours and different materials um, to express fashion in a different way. And on the bottom left was a commission that I had um, from a lady called Catherine, who she commissioned me to embroider these elements that had specific meaning to her. So she's a scientist, um, natural scientist. So there are, there's a, a sweet pea on the sleeve. Um, there's honey fungus, mushrooms. There's a shrew under the lapel, um, a chemical formula for kunzite and graphic elements for uh, different kinds of bacteria. So that was quite an interesting one because it was totally outside of what I was, what I would imagine doing, I suppose. So it was nice to be challenged and um, she was really happy with it. So that was, that was good. And then on the right is, this is more visual experiment. So this was a jacket that I embroidered and embellished with um, silver and black embroidery thread and translucent black ribbon which I sewed on in different formations onto the jacket and then I just thought well how can you sort of bring the two worlds together of embroidery and textiles and uh, image making fashion image making so I just decided to merge two images together two different angles of the jacket again it was very much an experiment but it was enjoyable just to kind of see what what happens um, and sometimes mistakes bring about quite happy results so yes this is you know it's kind of it's very enjoyable um, I try in my studio I have different areas so in one corner I've got an easel to do the painting and then I've Another corner, I've got a big trestle table to do the sewing and embroidery. And then I have a separate table for illustration, which I tend to focus on more when the fashion seasons, fashion weeks are in flow. Um, so yes, that's, that's kind of how I work. And um, yeah, I tried to kind of, from the, the first um, example here, this was really the first time of bringing the personal into my work and what was going on immediately around me. So I really do try to just stick with that as much as I can um, to bring a more personal touch into the illustration um, and to look at details and um, just try and relate it to my life really as much as possible, um, as far as possible as that is with fashion. Thank, thanks, Gemma. Um, I've unlocked everybody and unmuted. If, if anyone's got any questions for Gemma, feel free to jump in and, and ask away and, and she'll answer as bestly as she can. Hopefully you can all speak. <laughs> you can put you can put information in the chat as well. <clears throat> but um my my voice is sore today, but firstly, um, you know, listening to Gemma's journey and and building narratives into embroidery and looking for stories within photography or 
within advertising, especially like we're looking at this uh, Margela piece. You know, I when I look at all the work that we're sent in, and I you know I have to try and understand it or decode it or uh, have a, a a point of view on it. Um, I was really fascinated by these pieces, and I I really loved them because it was nice because some comments we do get is oh there's a lot of portraiture and things like that. So it was really nice to see someone tackling hands and thinking about the composition in a really uh, advanced way and and and, and almost. Um, the way that she's approaching these these paintings they feel really conclusive and they kind of work together really well they have a sort of a vintage feel but they feel contemporary as well so I I, I really love the way that Gemma's finding her own sort of tone of voice for capturing fashion and I'd, I, I got work um, a few years ago was capturing people's feet at Freeze Art Fair and another magazine got me to draw like what they were wearing on their shoes and what jewellery people were wearing on their hands. So they're the sorts of commissions that you don't think exist, but they do because they do want people to be voyeurs or documentary illustrators looking at people, but it's capturing these compositions as well. So I, I really, I can relate to these quite nicely. And I feel that I'd love to see I guess where she's done her oil paintings in a very modern way, and these feel sort of nostalgic, but are sort of have a modern feel. Is I'd love to see what would it if you went out and did cool hunting like Richard Haynes does, and I'd love to see a pair of Reebok trainers or a pair of Vayers or um, I don't know what uh, sort of Balenciagas or what shoes or trainers that the youngsters are wearing. I'd love to see a, a, a series. When I when I first started FIDA, I found a an artist in Ukraine and she just drew shoes and I and I got I asked her to create a series and she created a lovely series for me. And you know, it's just them sorts of quirkiness that I, I kind of reach out for and it captures my imagination. That's me personally. So I, I guess maybe I might have triggered a few ideas for a few people. I can see some stuff in the chat. Um lots of praise. Uh, love the Celeron pieces. Yeah, so if anyone's got any questions or ideas or thoughts, please feel free to to share. Hopefully, you've all been unlocked. I can see you all on silent again. I love the hands as well. I think the hands are fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, I think Patrick, you were mentioning. Were you, was it you mentioned Paul Arrego? Yeah. Another Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of reminds me of that. And I love the painterly kind of moody style. I agree. It's got that look of something maybe um, old vintage, but also modern. I think that's exactly right. Really interesting. Yeah, and I, I'd probably like to see, because they are quite small, but I'd love to see some bigger ones or are they cut out from a bigger painting? Um, you know, look at how painters mix things as well so maybe mm. it's a small painting within a bigger painting but cut into it and they're sort of abstracted i um i'm thinking of like someone like david sally someone like that who who has like a bit of a giacometti and then he'll have some comic book painting um i don't know if you know david sally he does no, no, of, no. yeah he does these sort of really surreal um paintings i think he's part of uh, he might be part of Pace Gallery or something, or Listen or something. Okay. But he 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 wrote a really interesting book about painting, and he talks about aesthetics. And um, he's a really interesting character to listen to. He loves talking and smoking his cigars. I think he <laughs> loved himself as well. So it's quite interesting to listen to him talk. Okay. But it, his idea on painting and how um, looking at the commercial side of painting, not which kind of taps into fashion a bit because it's mm. kind of has a bit of commerce in there. Um, yeah. And I, I you know, I, I, I really love this. And I, you know, I, I can imagine you going on holiday and looking at people, you know, you can imagine the Mediterraneans with their hands behind their backs. And yeah. You went to a gallery and uh, captured people looking at certain paintings and how their hands 
uh, move and they're, yeah. they're more of inquiries I think than anything exactly well that's actually something I've started looking at more is street style and seeing people in the street and you know that capture your attention either by what they're wearing or how they're sitting or, or what they're doing um yeah and uh yeah that's something I'm interested in doing more well I think I think the characters that when we went to Fashion Scout were probably yeah. more interesting than the shows <laughs> um and I know like Tracy Smith was looking and uh, introducing herself to some of the crowd so there was a lot of interesting characters in the crowd yeah really pushing themselves like, there was a guy with video screen on his face and there was all these sort of people and I, I think it was a really it was really great to see that back in fashion um, absolutely which is what I, I guess the role of fashion is for people to be individual and have their own voices out there and yeah. not be scared of the I guess the the norm so it's a, it's a great place for them to experiment and exactly and capture the imagination of the crowd uh, which I really saw at Fashion Scout I thought it was it was really great this year yeah it was and some fighter members really captured them really well as well like really yeah yeah no really de interesting de definitely um yeah if any anyone else has any ideas or thoughts you can always put it on slack um and and the goal is to kind of keep these quite short anyway and give you a sort of a space so you know Gemma thank you and it, it's been it's been great to see and and, and look at your work and and I'd be really interested to see where the paintings go probably challenge yourself a few more paintings yeah. nice to see yeah well thank you for creating the space to um talk about the work yes good 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 and, and hopefully the more we do of these um the more we'll be sharing them out and the more people will hear and get involved and they sort of backtrack through them so excellent and and thanks so much and uh We've got we've got another one this evening with Stephanie, who I think's on here as well. So we'll see her at seven tonight. Okay. Yeah, yeah look forward to that. Brilliant. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs> Have Thanks, a nice Patrick. Day, Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks, bye -bye. Gemma. Thanks, Patrick. Bye. 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 -bye. bye thank you.